world in the flavor sector uh, and their interpretation. So uh, Diego already has a nice job, had done a nice job in explaining uh, what is real anomalous re result and what are uh, actually our poor understandings. So, uh, so I will also, okay, so I will mostly, uh, I will focus uh, mainly on uh, semi-leptonic decays here because uh, these were uh, uh, the most of the interesting results uh, we have uh, for the last couple of years. So here I will focus on uh, the flavor changing uh, charge current interaction as well as neutral current interactions. And I will, uh, so uh, for uh, charge current, we'll be focusing on uh, B2C and B2U LUL -L decays. And here, as you know, that uh, the interesting topic is uh, the exclusive and inclusive determination of uh, VUB and VCB, also uh, the determination of this ratio, VUB by VCB. Okay, and as you have heard for the last couple of years, there is tension between uh, the exclusive and inclusive determination of, the, of these elements. Uh, so uh, we'll also update the current, uh, the recent uh, results and also uh, update you a few, the results of few ongoing works. So also I will be talking about the estimates of RDRD star and also some uh, lepton flavor inversely divalizing observables in B2U. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, give you the prediction in the standard model. Also I will talk about the uh, new physics sensitivities of these observables. So, and FCNC, uh, uh, if, uh, I will be focusing on both B2 DLL. Uh, this is some ongoing work. I will uh, this, this is already submitted work. And uh, so this is, uh, we'll present the results. A uh, few standard model, precise estimate in the standard model. And a couple of observables in B2 pi LL and B2 rho LL. And their are new physics sensitivities. And uh, uh, if time permits, I'll talk about also uh, uh, the uh, constraint on the Wilson coefficient from the model independent fits on the various operators uh, and uh, uh, model selection, because now we have a lot of data. Instead of going uh, one parameter fitting, we should think about considering uh, multiple parameter fittings and to do a model selection as well. Uh, so uh, flavor physics, by now we know that, we understand that uh, uh, CKM matrix is one of the important ingredients uh, for, for, for our understanding in the CP, standard model CP violation. And the goal of, uh, goal of uh, wave physics is basically, uh, or the flavor physics is to construct this unitary triangle. And the idea is to consist, consistency check in the standard model. Also uh, in the process, we may see some evidences for new physics. So this is the current measurement. Uh, the status, you can see the various observable has been, uh, the result of the various observable has been projected in the uh, row bar eta bar plane. And we can see a triangle here and also the apex uh, has been already, I mean, it's converging. We can see there is a unique region, which you can call an apex of the triangle. And uh, in this, you can see from here also that VUB, VCB uh, plays an important role in the determination of this apex. Other measurements also will be are very relevant, but also we need uh, therefore precise state, uh, precise uh, estimates of this observable is necessary. So <clears throat> also uh, now we have uh, uh, a H flap basically they have given uh, a number for this apex, the rho bar eta bar, uh, and you can see it's now it's more or less uh, ten percent or near about little larger than 10% accuracy it is known now. So we need to uh, further, uh, I mean, the error should be reduced, but I mean, let, I hope in future, uh, very precise measurement will reduce that error as well. So now CKM elements, uh, so you can see that uh, these are the uh, fit of the Wilkinson parameters, the four parameters that you need to construct the UT angle, UT triangle. Uh, and uh, so uh, these are the updated results. We also did one fit in, in, in the paper was in a different context, but we, we took this chance to fit all the parameters and our results is a, a good agreement with the UT fit results or CKM fitter results. And uh, for, uh, I mean, if you see B2 
PTG 2020 updates. So these are their average of various estimates, various other measurements, and various other predictions they included. And these are their estimates. And finally, this 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 is the uh, you can see the CCM elements in 2020 PTG 2022. So you can see here these are very precisely known. However, this is these two elements are relatively less precisely known compared to these other four elements. So, so as we know that, uh, I mean, semi-electronic decays are uh, playing an essential role for uh, for the extraction of these elements. You have both inclusive decays where you do not have a, uh, you have all the, you need to sum over all the uh, possible states, or the charm or U, and here you have, you have specific states, either pi or D, D star or rho, whatever. So, and so accordingly, these things will be sensitive to the CKM element. There are other methods, other methods like leptonic, but this is not useful because it's helicid suppressed. And hadronic decays are really complex because of the QCD. So uh, semi-leptonic is the good option to, for the determination of all this uh, sigma element. And inclusive versus exclusive. So <clears throat> uh, inclusive rates, I mean, for both B to C and B to U, I mean, we have a solid description via OP. You can do a a systematic expansion in, in, in power of lambda by MQ. And you can add systematically the correction at different order of alpha H and taking at different order the power corrections. So, uh, so and the non perturbative uh, unknowns will be here. So that could be extracted from the data uh, because you have only power corrections, you will have the various operators will be appearing and their matrix element will be of non perturbative nature. Uh, you cannot, uh, it's difficult to calculate them from first principle. So therefore we need to rely on data and therefore it both theoretically and experimentally a challenge. So <clears throat> now uh, exclusive decays on the other hand are sensitive to the form factors. So these are also non perturbative uh, in nature and there are uh, methods to estimate uh, those things like lattice QCD, QCD sum rule and light on sum rule, all these methods are, are utilized to uh, estimate those form factors in different regions of Q square. And so therefore here it's theoretically challenging. And so exclusive decays uh, have a description in terms of Hibikawa capital theory. It was uh, till uh, last couple of years, I mean, uh, it was used, but nowadays uh, with the more data, uh, we use a different form factor parameterization. So it's a, uh, you can here, you can model independent way, you can extract the form factor. Uh, using uh, QCD dispersion relation unitarity and electricity. So, uh, so this is the, this is the current uh, trend. I mean, current way I'm doing the analysis or to extract the form factor. So, and we hope uh, that with the with the more precise inputs from the lattice and the errors of uh, of various estimates will be uh, under good control. So now inclusive decays. So you know that as I mentioned that. You, at the leading order, you consider the free quark decay and then systematically we take into account the corrections at different orders uh, in alpha S as well as the power corrections. So you see the decay rates are uh, sensitive to various non perturbative parameters, mu pi square, mu g square, rho d, rho l s. And uh, so you can see in order to extract VCB pizza, you need to know all these corrections, okay? So, uh, uh, and this, so therefore major sources of uncertainties will be mass of the big quarks, uh, higher order QD, QCD radiative corrections, and the missing higher order corrections at different order in one by B, and also non perturbative matrix elements. So these are the things which we need to know. So therefore, uh, and another, another thing apart from the rates, another observable, other kind of observable that would be, that will be possible, that would be to uh, define is the moments, moments for the differential distribution, like lepton energy, hydrogen energy, and recently Q squared. So Q square moments uh, will not be sensitive to uh, rho ls. You don't need uh, rho ls here. But anyway, so other uh, moments will be sensitive to all these uh, uh, you know, non-perturbative parameters. So if you have data on the moments, then you can fit those parameters. That's precisely what we are doing here. So uh, so we are uh, from the OP parameter. We are fitting from the data on moments, and then using these fit results here in the decay rates, we are extracting easily. Okay, so that's the whole idea of doing the fits. 
So now these are the current status. So uh, available calculation so far. We have for the total lead, we have, you can see various corrections are available at different orders. And uh, for the lep lepton and hydro moments, we also have various corrections available at different orders. So it has been mentioned here. And so far, uh, since the last 10 years, you can see the improvement, how things are, uh, I mean, various corrections has been added systematically, and we can see improvement in the extraction of VCB. And now uh, with the add of uh, uh, the very recent updates last one years, probably one or two years. So this alpha SQ corrections has been, uh, uh, the, uh, the results for this is available. It has been added to the rates only, and uh, the estimate has been uh, obtained. You can see the value here. And uh, very recently, another uh, different method has been proposed. It's a, it's a fitting with the Q-score moments. Now there is an advantage of using this uh, uh, fitting this this method because here you can see that you have 18 matrix element. If you take the correction at one by MB four, one by MB five order, and that matrix element will reduce uh, because of some uh, reparameterization invariance and all these things. So this will reduce if you fit the decay rate to the or the moments to the uh, to the Q square moments basically the decay distribution of Q square moments. So that's why you can see here the value also changes. With you, here, you have the best fit point has been shifted to a lower value, and uh, so now once we have this inclusive estimate, we should also look for the exclusive. Uh, uh, so it, let's let's also uh, I'll comment here about the inclusive determination of BUB. So BUB is the problem. Uh, it's also theoretically it's not difficult. Its uh, calculation will go in the similar way like we do in B two C. The problem will be the uh, the large background from B to C. So if you if, since because of this large background, uh, it will, will be it will be at the corner of the face space, and at the corner of the face space where uh, your uh, you will face the endpoint singularity in the lepton energy spectrum. So uh, that's the major problem here. So endpoints, how to deal with this endpoint singularity? So definitely, you can realize that uh, this endpoint singularity you need to sum up and you need to. You need to resum them and you need to introduce safe functions. So QCD safe functions is the problematic and there is no fast end calculation for these safe functions. So therefore, uh, you, can, you can see the complexity in the estim estimation of BUB from the inclusive decays. Okay. So there are methods to estimate these safe functions. Uh, there are various uh, methods like uh, some, some, some methods tries to avert the endpoint region some method tried to try to uh, do the calculation within that shape, within the endpoint region, and some tried to calculate the shape function directly from the QCD principle. But all of them uh, have some uh, model dependency and uh, it's not free from error. So therefore, and this this the estimates of BUB. You can see it has a large error because of various things, and the central value is also relatively high. Now <clears throat> this is the average I have taken from PDE in 2022. So now let's talk about the exclusive decays. So exclusive, you, we have uh, for pseudoscalar, B decaying to the pseudoscalar, we have two form factors and B decaying to a vector, we have four form factors in total. So therefore here, the pro here only the, we need the input on the form factors. And uh, so here uh, form factors, once you lattice QCD and LCSR can give you the inputs, but at two regions of Q squared, uh, so, but you, in order to get to the decay distribution, you need the shape of the form factor. So, therefore, you need to extrapolate the uh, uh, the whole thing in the uh, the the uh, uh, from the endpoint region to the whole kinematical kinematically allowed region. Okay. So, <clears throat> so an extrapolation to the kinematically allowed region is necessary, and here we use uh, now uh, it's basically uh, the series simple series expansion where the uh, similar training region has been. Uh, uh, has been, uh, I mean, like analytically continued to the uh, to a disk of uh, with, I mean, uh, of radius j equals j less than one, and it follows some dispersion relation, and dispersion relation will give you directly constant on the coefficient of these uh, parameters here. So this is uh, this is series expansion, and then uh, we have uh, like these parameters are here basically. Uh, to uh, PT and PT has been introduced to take control over the singularities in, in FT. 
And here we have, instead of sim, uh, series expansion, we have simple series expansion also that's typically defined at the, uh, this way, the form factor parameter. This is, has been introduced for B to pi. And the reason to introduce it to take into account this uh, del F plus by del Z at the end, at the pair production region, it's to be zero so that uh, you can, we can uh, unphysical singularity at the threshold we can avoid because we are doing the calculation in the pair production region. And that, had, that calculation has been analytically continued to, to the uh, semi-leptonic region. So we have to avoid this kind of things and BGL parameters and have this or simple series expansion have this problem. So to avoid this problem, it has been introduced here. And so it also fixes the one by Q square fall of behavior of the BGL series expansion. So that's how, uh, that's, that's precisely the uh, form factor parameterism that we use in, in the exclusive decays. So now constraining the form factors, therefore you need lattice, you need experimental data, and you need light consumption rule and QCDS. So all these inputs are needed. And where do you truncate the series that you need to fix? by checking the stability of the results. So, uh, and the uh, stability of the results will fix where to truncate the series. And so far, you can see you have multitude of uh, uh, inputs are available on various, uh, from experiment, from lattice, from LCSR, on these different modes, okay? So this, uh, this has now has been uh, incorporated so far in the analysis. So now VZB exclusive, so this is, uh, the PDG 2022 average, uh, you can see it's 39.4. It's, uh, it's not very far away from the inclusive determination, so more or less, uh, okay. I mean, from B to D, B to D star is different, but also from uh, B, BS to DS and BS to DS star, it's relatively higher value compared to what we are getting from B to D and B to D star. So here we are doing uh, a fit to all these four modes including uh, all the inputs like uh, milk, HPQCD, LCSR. And uh, we, the, our results is uh, combining all these modes, all the lattice, all the LCSR inputs is like 40.8. So you can see it's, it's in between these two values, uh, which, which is expected. And uh, it is, not, it is uh, not exactly consistent in one sigma, but very close. So we hope that with, with more precision, things will uh, converge at some point. So basically, VCB is, in my opinion, it's, it's okay. I mean, inclusive and exclusive determination, there should not be any problem. You can convert at some point. Yeah, because form, because formula milk have very precise results. It's only because of this formula milk. If I, if I simply drop formula milk, it will be larger. So VUB, so uh, VUB so far, uh, uh, the PDG 2022, I'm, uh, so the average was like 3.70, and with, the, with this error, uh, it includes this analysis data plus lattice. If you include LCSR with this value will reduce a bit, but it should be consistent with this. So we are now, we did the disparate analysis. We include, we include all the uh, possible uh, inputs uh, independently as well as combinedly, uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, also we extracted this ratio uh, by taking the VCB in from our earlier fit, and we predicted this ratio. Here in this analysis, you can see VCB, VCB also has been extracted experimentally from other modes, like from baryonic decay ratio of the baryonic decays. So this is the value that they have uh, obtained experimentally. And uh, here in this analysis, this is relatively new results, new, uh, which has not been included in this average. And uh, so here, but this value is relatively high, but because of this only, we are getting a lower value, 3.62 compared to this one. Best, I mean, like the best fit value is reducing by certain percentage, uh, but the error is almost compatible. So also now uh, we have inputs on base to K, so which has been included now and with this, all this, uh, uh, with all the B to pi and lattice and as well as LCSR. So you can see values are, uh, best fit points are reducing from 3.62 even. And you can see for B to rho, but B to rho, B to omega, we don't have any lattice result available yet. So only experiment and LCSR. So you can see we have relatively lower values for VUB. And if you combine them, obviously you are going to get a much lower value. However, uh, uh, for, for 
for view b vcb to be of this order uh, you need a low value of uh, for the for view b because vcb if we are fixing uh, like for around 40 then we have to have a value like this we have to have a value for uh, view b relatively low value and uh, this this is from other modes other modes mean uh, like the modes uh, directly it's not included like bub b2u channels so like second feature you have uh, fitting of the four parameters from various other modes and from there you can construct vub and that is you can see 3.64 is perfectly matching with this determination or directly from b2u mode so uh, this is really a puzzling thing i don't know uh, later on and but as i said inclusive determination has a lot of problems so we need to uh, maybe uh, that that problem we need to resolve first and then we can conclude further so observable rd and rd star so yeah, as you have seen that this is the recent plot from uh, lscb they have this recent measurement and you can see this result shows that rd star is consistent with the standard model our rd is slightly uh, sorry rd star is off and rd you have uh, the value is consistent right so uh, rd star sorry rd star is consistent rd is off slightly so uh, this thing we have uh, for uh, couple of years ago we did one analysis and we have uh, there we, we had shown that what are the correlation between rd and rd star in different new physics scenarios that has been considered here this is the in a model independent way we have done the analysis so you can see large rd and rd star would be consistent with the standard model you have limited number of scenarios which can explain this right one is this uh, blue one and the other is this green one so basically uh, tensor or scalar current contribution can explain this thing. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> now this is the predictions for RD star uh, from Lattice, this 2021 result, Formula Milk. So they have got uh, a relatively less error. However, we did, we use their result and we use their direct uh, synthetic data, or synthetic point we use in our analysis and we pred predicted the value. We have large error. Uh, so they 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 have a lot of atoms in their analysis so we should this in my opinion we should not do it so we didn't we relax those atoms for the uh, parameters and all these things and we got a value which have large error and you can see this value uh, will be consistent with the with the measurement and uh, however uh, problem will be with rd rd has uh, really uh, away from the experimental value and at the and if you if we uh, with the lattice if we include experiment value will be uh, error will be much less but the value will reduce the best point will reduce to like 2 to 5.250 so what in a desperate move what we did we include the new physics effect in uh, in b2 uh, cl level like uh, light lepton uh, channels and we did the fit uh, with the pit and we extracted rd and rd star you can see in new physics these are the constraints on various new physics and but rd rd star did not see from their uh, values whatever the stand these values are here i mean they're all this new physics scenario things are consistent and then what we did we include the new physics differently in b2 uh, l, l like muon and electron channel we include differently and then tau like different new physics in different and then we have like uh, vcb is we are getting consistently the same value in all the fits and uh, the rdr star you can see in few scenarios we can explain uh, the observations. Okay. So with, with the, these are the predictions. So this is, uh, uh, we have a couple of observables, but I think I will skip them. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, so we can later on, there are a couple of predictions here and the new physics sensitivity also we have discussed here. So uh, you can see, uh, pre you can distinguish the various new physics scenarios from these observable, and these are very precisely known, the observable that we have in B2 pi L level. Okay. Similarly, B2 rho, we discuss a couple of observable, we define a couple of observable here. Those can be extracted very precisely. You can see the numbers, the very precise number in the standard model. And also they are sensitive to new physics. So we have charted here all the, uh, sense, all different kinds of sensitivity towards new physics. And that can be useful uh, to uh, from 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 uh, for, from by looking at the pattern of the data, one will be able to helpful. Uh, I mean, one can will be able to the pinpoint the 
different kind of new interactions. So let me skip all this thing. Uh, here, uh, those who are interested can look at this. Uh, okay, various predictions we have given here. Also, we have uh, shown the new sensitivity. B2 is, is LL observable. So we have seen here that still uh, uh, the RK, RK star measurements are uh, little of the standard model predictions. Also, uh, P5 and P, P5 prime and P2, uh, we can see the deviations from the measurements. And uh, so uh, whether it is new physics or our, again, our poor understanding of the standard model that we need to wait for, uh, for more precise experimental results. And then new physics explanation. So as I said, uh, most of the earlier analysis, uh, um, or we, when we did one analysis where we found that O9, uh, the operator uh, additional of uh, O9, new contribution in O9 will be a plausible slow solution. However, uh, I mean, in a realistic model, uh, you can have more operators contributing to the process, okay? And also now we have a lot of data. So, uh, so if we, now point is that, uh, we need to consider those possibilities considering various operators contributing simultaneously. So now here, the point is that if you do the analysis with more uh, parameters, then there are chances of overfitting. So, so you need to just use some different criteria or different technique to uh, uh, do the analysis. So here we adopted this Akaiki's information theoretic approach where uh, we define uh, a modified uh, parameter where uh, depending on the value of this, you can classify the model. And here we, the, whatever the operators we have here, all possible combinations we consider and did the fit. And we found out uh, for various models, we de determined delta IICC and also mean square error also we estimated. And you can see that, oh, I mean, the operator with well, single operator scenario is appearing in the list where this list we have prepared by considering delta AIC may be less than six. Okay. And th those models we have only kept in the list. And you can see single operator scenario is appearing at the same time, two operator scenarios are also appearing, three operators are also appearing. And this is the, uh, but all, all of this, I mean, ranking has been done following this delta AIC, but all this a combination could be a plausible solution. So one should not take, give preference one with respect to the other. So this is what uh, uh, we have so far. So now this is outlook. So a more precise estimate of the CKM elements are necessary as we have seen. And so BCB, BUB will be, uh, uh, I mean, we need to extract it with, with a good precision. And, and we know that uh, it is possible uh, in exclusive and inclusive both decays, uh, we need some time. And uh, unknown power corrections, we need to calculate in inclusive decays. Uh, for uh, also uh, now for B2U, uh, nowadays modern techniques are, are in use to constrain the safe function, that is uh, machine learning and whatever neural networks, various uh, techniques are in use to constrain the safe functions. Hopefully, at some point, we will converge to something. And uh, also, we need more input from lattice as well as experimental precision needs to be improved. Regarding RD star, situation will be more clear if we have more precise data from lattice and also experimental precision uh, once the things improve. Also in this regard, maybe uh, the bin by bin analysis for B2D D star tau neuter would be useful uh, for simultaneous extraction of CKM and new physics for, from B2D tau neuter decays as well. And for FCNC process, we have to wait for more precise data. Let's hope for the best. Thank you. Thank you, Sohitra, for the nice and comprehensive review. And questions, Rusa? Yes. We do row, yeah. So uh, then uh, how are you uh, extracting the shape? Experiment is available. Experimental data is available. But then you are fitting the light cone sum rule form G factors expansion. with some yes. function. Z expansion won't G work, expansion. right? Yes, G expansion. But that's still also in the high Q square. So Z expansion. No, no, G expansion, you can bring it down to the low Q square. What is the problem? So it will be a- uh, Experimental data is available throughout the whole region. 
Yes, so Z will be valid until what? Five, six G V square? No, no, your LCSI predictions will be maybe in the low Q square region. That's fine. But Z expansion, you can do to have a high Q square expansion. Your error will be large. Yes, like no, huge. Fine. Error, we have large. Okay. Large error, no problem. But note that we are, we are normalizing it with B, B to pi L new L, all the for B to rho. Okay. So what happened? DUB uncertainty due to DUB will cancel. Mm -hmm. That's one of the major uncertainty that you have. Yes. So okay. while, uh, while we are doing the fit also, we are just normalizing it with B to pi. Okay. That means DUB will cancel, therefore your error will be under control. But anyway, the observable that we defined for B2 rho have large error compared to B2 pi. Mm. Okay. And one more question I have regarding when you are adding uh, new physics in muon channel and also in electron channel. Okay. Uh, muon, yeah, but you can normalize the tau and muon you are saying. You mean yes. both the low, low lepton masses. Yes, that's light right. lepton you were saying. Yes, light okay, lepton yeah. you are adding yeah. new physics. Uh -huh. So and then trying to explain RD R D star. Yeah. No, not trying to explain. Okay. RD R D star, what exactly we are getting? Like let's say one scenario is that if you have purely standard model. Now purely standard model, when do you say it's purely standard model? In my opinion, if you have your inputs only related to uh, some theory estimate, that is QC or LCSR. If you are using experiment. That you cannot say it's purely uh, standard model prediction, right? You may have bias. Yes. So then the question is that if you really have bias, let's do the fit with new physics, but then also consider uh, 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 experimental data you consider, then also you need to consider new physics, then do the fit and see whether there is a consistency. We found that the RDR distance is not changing even if we include new physics in P2 CEL level. Okay. Yes, but then uh, are you uh, including the observable this? Uh, ratio of um, RB mu electron, which Bell uh, actually measured, B to D mu nu with B to B to D mu nu with B no, to no, D those mu. things. So we are just uh, fitting the things uh, uh, simply from the look. Point is that those are only few data, but B to uh, C L nu L you have multiple of data available, right? Yes. Your bean data. So those are those those are those will control your fit. Not yes. one or two single parameters. So those are already included because it's, uh, those new physics values looks quite large and and this prediction from Bell is quite precise. So that's what I'm worried whether it's allowed or not. Okay. Okay. No, as I said, ask. one or two data will not impact the whole analysis. You have multiple. I have a multitude of data from B two C L. So when you are showing the RD RD star. Result, you made a comment that uh, uh, that there is no anomaly on the RD star, and then so I was just thinking, are you? I'm saying consistent. the Babur, Babur, uh, so Babur data point, are you missing, or I mean, what is L LSCB part? LSCB part I was talking like RD, if you see their plot, they have a correlation. So correlation RD, if you okay, let me show you. So yeah, if you can go there. Ah, oh, there is. Can I go? How to go to my? These are these are backup slides and okay. Okay. Oh. Maybe we'll discuss it tea time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe we can discuss. Yeah, point is that, no, a whole point is that if you see the plot, uh, RD star is uh, the value of the RD star allowed value, it should be consistent with the standard model. Time. Okay, RD would be higher because of, the, because of the slope that you have. Okay, standard model uh, RD value will be on the, uh, it will have large value. And RD star is the value that you allowed value will be consistent with that. Also numerically, you can see like 285 and error, you have large error, right? So, uh, and now if I get from the lattice like uh, 271 plus minus 0 0.03, then this already crossing your experimental, or it include all the experimental region, experimentally allowed region. So we have to actually, in my, my point is that we have to wait for more precise data from lattice to, to come to a conclusion. Uh, yeah, for the ratio, uh, PUB by PUB, mm. difference between inclusive and exclusive value, can you comment that uh, how much it is 
compared to the differences uh, for individual view B and VC, and whether the ratio can be considered a cleaner observable uh, compared to RDRD star in VUB by VC from inclusive. Yeah, so the difference between inclusive and exclusive for the okay, whole mean, ratio. Okay, uh, you mean inclusive determination of VUB inclusive and uh, inclusive determination of VCB. Yeah. That number I did not check. Uh, I, 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 in, okay, uh, we tried to, uh, while we did second fit, we tried to uh, include this thing in our, in our fit. And we have seen that uh, the, uh, the, from the things that are coming from the other results, uh, matching with something, but only probably one or two measurements is completely different. So if you see the, the way it is emerging in the, in the, in the in, uh, we are calling it an anomaly, it's really two, uh, one or two measurements are completely different off the track than the other measurements. So uh, I, I don't think, in my opinion, personally, I, I don't feel it like uh, one can explain it uh, 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 by, uh, by any different kind of new physics that is, because your second measurement is so precise. This uh, vector-like method mm. doesn't affect PK measurement. Yeah, that may be. <laughs> but then how, how but if it's not affecting CKM measurement, then you need to look for the processes from which they are uh, concluding these anomalies. How much impact will be there that the, from there you can confirm. Because it's, it's directly, uh, if you look at the measurement of CKM and then try to conclude, it will be difficult. Uh, if you just look for the process from where they are concluding, then it would be helpful. And we tried to do it. And uh, we saw that this, those measurements were not including in the, in the CKM pitch directly. Also, UT, UT, CKM fitter or UT fit, they're also not directly using a couple of inputs. Okay, let's, let's thank Somitra again.